Good morning, Pastor Bill Evans, Fellowship Baptist Church, and we're ready to put together our worship service. Um, we tape the whole thing from kids' songs to whatever. It goes up on the uh, YouTube. It's on the radio right now for any listening in from hospital. Uh, Grandma very often is, and others maybe at home. We need to change the sign. If you, somebody's talking about it, the uh, uh, sign says 9 o'clock. It's uh, 10 o'clock is when our service is on, is when it's being taped right now. So if you know of anybody listening, somebody came the other day and said they were uh, had been sitting in the parking lot for a couple of Sundays listening because they weren't sure the rules were coming in. Uh, you can be in, just wearing a mask, where you're supposed to be. It uh, doesn't matter of your vaccine status uh, for the worship service. So good. Uh, excellent little bulletin there. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. A Bible that's falling apart is, usually belongs to someone who isn't falling apart. That's, that's pretty neat. Um, okay, thanks for that, Carol. Okay, uh, let's get started with some kids songs. And uh, don't build your house on the sandy land. And uh, sandy land, there's places they're saying the water's rising and the sand is uh, starting to flush places out and all uh, kinds of weird things. Let's sing this song. Don't build your house on the sandy land. No, 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 don't build it too near the shore. Well, it might look kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice. Yes, you'll have to build your house once more. You got to build your house upon a rock. Make a firm foundation on a solid spot. Oh, the storms may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm feeding on the living bread. Now, that's a question. This side and this side, okay. You guys ask the question, we'll give you the answer, okay? It says the question is, what, never thirst again? No, never thirst again, okay? I am feeding on the living bread. I am drinking at the fountain head. And whosoever drinks... Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. What, never thirst again? What, never thirst again? And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. Let's try that again and we'll answer the question. We'll ask the question. They'll give the, uh, you answer the question, ask her and we'll give the answer. Here we go. I am feeding on the living bread. I am drinking at the fountain head. And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. No, never thirst again. No, never thirst again. And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. Okay, real good. Well, we got our worship team coming, and uh, they'll come up now. And birthdays, thank you. And anniversaries, if you had one. I hear Miss Norma had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. So, uh, and uh, others. Uh, and who else had a birthday this past week? Um, Payette's had a baby boy. Malcolm is his name. X is his middle name, and uh, we don't know it. Um, anyhow, so uh, happy birthday to... Uh, a uh, little Malcolm as well this week. Anybody else get older that we can identify? None. Who's that? Okay, oh, 13 today. Okay, Fiona, good deal. Happy birthday, Fiona. Good, all right. All right, let's um, carry on with uh, happy birthday to you. We got two verses, one for uh, was the most important part, but here this first part is about we're glad that you are getting older and we can celebrate with you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do, born again through salvation, how many have you? In the mom and dad's family, we'll look at the little Payette guy and see what he looks like and see if we can see who he looks like. Uh, Ramsey said the other day, he looks just like Dad. Well, Dad's got a beard, so I don't know. <laughs> he didn't look like Dad to me, but anyhow, he thought he looked like his dad. Uh, whatever. Joe's got a birthday coming up soon this week? Next week. Okay, well, good. Well, Jordan, okay. Remember Jordan. And nobody had anniversaries. Okay, spring times. All right. Okay, let's get the worship team to come now, and uh, they will come and sing for us. Thank you.
Good morning, and uh, welcome here. It's good to be back. Missed a few Sundays. Uh, please stand with us and join us as we worship. Take a moment to welcome someone here and say good morning. Yeah. 
Thank you. You may have a seat. It's not COVID. very much that's good singing good trust you enjoyed that okay we've got your bulletin in hand hopefully there and it's uh, well written and uh, I like that part of a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't and in today's world with the stressors that are going on all around all fronts uh, you have lots to be nervous about but uh, you have nothing to be anxious about because he says what he says if you're anxious uh, pray and uh, see what God does. Cast your burden upon the Lord, for he cares for you, and he knows about that anxiety you have. So uh, let's uh, be part of that, uh, soldiers of the army of salvation, and uh, God is raising up to save the world, and part of our message to the world is in Christ. We've got a, a safety and a peace of God that passes understanding, so we trust you understand that. Bulletin things that are happening there, we've been... Uh, 
Um, we got uh, the youth on the Friday night stuff. Is that on the back, Carol? She says there's stuff on the back there sometimes, but whatever. Uh, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we've been here studying Mickey's place now. Uh, the, uh, the book of Isaiah, we're up to chapter 4 and 5 this week. 4 is a tiny one, and then that. But Friday night, the youth, and then we have some stuff happening. Next weekend, we've got some uh, guys coming from the denomination, so I'll not be preaching. Uh, Todd Chapman, whose dad, uh, Todd was here as a little boy. His parents came as missionaries to start this work here. And uh, way back in the good old days, the story was that this town was going to blossom to 10,000. And, and then somebody got a bright idea, well, let's build a town up there by the coal mines. So uh, the Baptists were already headed this way, so they came, and the uh, uh, church in Tumblr got started, and the Henleys were part of that, starting that work, did that, started that work up there. So uh, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, that's stuff from the good old days. Todd was uh, uh, with his folks that come up here to the work, and uh, they worked and started this work and built it up a bunch. So um, anyhow, he's going to be preaching next week, but we're going to Friday night. We're having some uh, uh, board material uh, meetings, uh, 7 o'clock, and then Saturday again. So and then Todd will be here on Sunday. So um, just be mindful of those things. Pray for them. Um, we uh, Bobby passed away this week, and she will be celebrated her life on the uh, Saturday of uh, uh, Easter weekend. So uh, just be mindful of that. Um, Len Gagnon is not having a service that we know of as of yet. Anyhow, so just pray for his family and those there. Uh, but, okay. Um, all right. Hunter Core. This an ad, this, okay, you can get that up. Okay. Uh, Camp, why would you put this ugly guy in there? Scare kids away. <laughs> Uh, take that gun. Anyhow, there's some camp programs that's going on. This poster will be at the back if you need to look at it or go online and register with Camp Secatel. So if somebody wants in on the core, tell them to check the Camp Secatel website, and then they can get that and um, whatever. So And so potential cabin leaders, and then the other one there, Unbound, is happening as well. So just be mindful of that. Uh, okay, any other announcements? Missionaries or otherwise and such like that. And so camp, is there anything different other than these things happening? Good deal. If you want to be a Sunday school teacher in the future, voila, there you go. Jump in on that. Uh, Glenn, do you have something to announce now? Okay. We've had gremlins in our... It's charged up. I had new batteries this morning. We charged up. You're coming here? Let's... Check, hello. Okay, so we uh, update from the search committee, for the pastor search committee. We have someone coming to candidate for this church uh, whose name is David McMaster in a month from now, roughly, uh, April 9th, 10th weekend. We, we'd like him here for a full three days, so the Friday, Saturday, and the Sunday. And of course, he'll preach on the Sunday, and so this will be your time to meet him and his wife and hopefully their new baby, which is due in a couple weeks. So their family is coming. We're really excited. He seems like a great guy and uh, different than Bill, obviously, who isn't. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, he, yeah, he better be different. Maybe a little better looking. We'll see what, he, what you think. But, uh, but he is a young, young guy, young family. So uh, we're really excited. And hopefully you guys will be around to, to meet him uh, when that day comes. So. Why would you put that picture on the camp program? <laughs> and you know, you're a noble folk to come look at this face every week. So uh, uh, it makes me laugh when I sh look at the shave in the morning or whatever. But uh, anyhow, thanks for coming. Okay, let's get started with our worship songs and our hymn. And uh, stand together as we sing. And we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. And the second verse is really important. So forget about yourself and magnify his name and worship him. And try to lay aside the cares, what's going on this afternoon and whatever. And, I got plans, maybe a little date with my pillow and uh, 
I had a hair raising week last week, three trips out of town and, uh, and and overcast most of the week and I just oh boy. So I had two snoozes in the sun yesterday, maybe three. I can't even remember. I just kept falling asleep in the sunshine. <clears throat> Come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Our Father and our God, we want to bless you this morning for the privilege that's ours to gather at your house and to worship you. Uh, Father, you challenge that uh, people should worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask that you would grant grace to that end, that you would help us, uh, Father, to really just forget about ourselves and forget about our afternoon and the things that we might do even in service for you. But God, that we would just focus on our God, our Savior Jesus, his great love where he hung upon a, an old rugged cross. Uh, that uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become and given the very righteousness of God by faith in his name. We bless you for that wonderful truth. And God, as we celebrate this morning uh, around your, at your house in worship and adoration, <clears throat> we, um, we thank you for the sacrifice of Christ. And we'll remember that as the Lord's table and the way he is ordained. But we ask God that your grace would just be upon us and help us to, as we meet together. That the sacrifice of praise and adoration we offer would be uh, that, uh, of a sweet smell to your nostrils. That you would enjoy that which we give. So receive our thanks, O God, as our prayer. We ask God this morning for your grace to be upon uh, those among us that mourn and have issues of hurt and whatever the Nicholson family with Bobby's passing. We commit to you her spirit, O oh God. We bless you for her love for, and her service to uh, the Lord Jesus in her time here in her recent later years of her life. We bless you. And she embraced the name of Jesus and she loved him. And just, uh, God, we thank you for her testimony as we uh, will leave her uh, family's hand in your hands and ask you to encourage their hearts and bless them and that her faith in you would would be uh, considered by them and, and just think to know you, oh God, draw near and be their portion, help them and, as they continue to adjust. And Father, we uh, pray for Ali's family and her uh, grandpa's passing. With Grandma, hold her close and Ali's uh, uh, mom's uh, siblings and whatever, hold them each one and bless them, Father. We thank you. We can leave those in your hands as well. And then, Father, for the Zimmerman clan, uh, with Eugene's passing and the celebration of his life coming, just let your grace attend and uh, hold his wife close and his kids. And then, Father, for the Lapierre family and that tragic loss from Sunday, we ask your grace to be with them and help, oh God, in the celebration of that life with Joe, with uh, uh, Joanne, help her in her hospital to heal up and for the other people to be touched and be healed up as well, oh God, is our prayer. So we ask your mercies, Father, to be upon these situations. In our community in these days, oh God, that your spirit would pour out. And God, that you would help and touch the lives of people and those who once went with joy to the house of the Lord, but they've grown cold. God, that even through this hour, your spirit would convict their hearts and challenge them. With reminding them of the joy they once shared in going to your house. Help and bless them, O oh God, and be their portion is our prayer. We thank you for raising up from health and strength those who are sick. And we pray for any that are sick today that you would touch their bodies and raise them up. Encourage people and grandma and the others in the long-term care hospital. Hold them close and minister to their hearts. We bless you for the sunshine. We thank you for your promise that spring follows winter and this shall be while the earth shall last. We bless you for that and for the taste and touch of spring we've had. We thank you for these things. So we receive our thanks for each one. Bless each heart and each home represented here. Hear our prayer and bless us in this time that we celebrate together. A risen Savior, a loving Father in heaven.
heaven that loves us and cares for us and ordains all things after the counsel of his own will. And Father, with that in mind, we are mindful that the Ukraine story is before you and you know. And we ask, oh God, for a stopping of that war however you would. And uh, so the nations that are talking to uh, Putin's head, that someone might break through, that your spirit would either knock him down or God, that they would just talk sense to his brain. Help, oh God, and uh, stand against the evil that's going on in that part of the world. Hear our prayer, oh God. And be with our land and protect us and keep us and uh, let your mercies attend on all sides. For your grace and your goodness and your love, we want to thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> thank you. I do be, pray for Jana. Um, she's got family over there and whatever, so uh, need uh, God's help to be with them. And then uh, Karen's got some friends. She's a uh, friend she's talking to online there. And, of course, they don't contact you for days on end or something like this because they can't or whatever. And then it's nice to get that text that they're alive. And, okay, so <clears throat> uh, just some of the announcements we have online there for us, Glenn, if we can, the prayer requests line there, <clears throat> one prayer chain at gmail.com. And then he transfers to keep, help us keep the lights on if you wish with that. That's uh, good there. And anything else that we need, uh, um, I meant to pray for Pastor this uh, David McMaster fella and uh, planning whatever and the health of their pregnancy. Payette's had a little baby. Do we know the weight or anything? Uh, Malcolm's weight? Nope. Six pounds something. That's a good start. Eh? Yeah, well, she, he's number three or something, isn't he? Yeah. <coughs> okay. <coughs> well, no more announcements that we need? Prayer requests and stuff like that? Okay. Ross. Okay. Oh, I pray for West Fraser, and I heard that yesterday. They're shutting down to three days a week. So there we go. Okay, let's sing our next song, and it's a tribute to uh, the to Malcolm uh, because he lives, and uh, this is a great song. So let's get you to stand together and sing. Change your position. We'll have the message right after. God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. Died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is. sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow Life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I'll know he Life is worth the living just because
seated please thank you um, Sunday school stuff junior church is happening for I don't know what ages we got what kids we got there we go some good <clears throat> does that kill the hum if I do that yes We got gremlins in our sound system there somewhere, and we've got too much stuff piled back there or whatever. We're trying to figure that out, but <coughs> the, the devil wants to interrupt, slow down, stop, uh, just make miserable anything that he can. And our job is to understand that and just carry on and rejoice in the Lord and His goodness and unplug things that can be unplugged. We, um, <coughs> I want to consider some thoughts today. Um, tying them into the Lord's table, and it's good to have people back and being able to celebrate the Lord's table, because we carried on throughout the whole pandemic, the, the three or four or five of us at the service, after the service, we would meet at the back, but um, I've been reading through my scriptures, and uh, as I talk about, sometimes a, a verse comes off the page, and you just kind of, what, and you can't wrestle away from it, and whatever, and I had a, ver a word underlined in my Bible, and, uh, and it, I had to go dig up what that information was about, and out of it comes this sermon. Um, <clears throat> And uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul is arguing, talking to the church that he is going to come there. And he says, my third time, I think later on, he says, my third time, I'm, I'm writing to you, uh, whatever. But uh, he's, he's coming to, uh, uh, he's going to come to uh, Corinth because uh, they have said, hey, they sent him an email and said, hey, we've taken up an offering. We've got a humongous pile of money to give to you people for the support of the saints at Jerusalem. And, and so uh, they had this money, but nobody was seemingly able or however to bring it. So Paul says, I'm coming to get this money. Now, I want that. And uh, one scholar says three times he uses a reference to pro. Uh, you, uh, verse 5, I think he talks there. We have, so I thought it necessary, brethren, that they would go on ahead. And that's pro, uh, walk ahead, pro. And to arrange beforehand. And there's another pro. And the previously promised pro, uh, a bountiful gift, so that the same would be ready uh, as a bountiful gift not affected by covetousness. And that's kind of an interesting word. Um, uh, you got this money before all of a sudden, well, no, we, we decided we better paint the church so we'll save the money from the missions project and, and, and paint the church. I don't know where the word, they, 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 the scholars just don't know exactly why this word's put in there is not affected by covetousness. But anyhow, those three things. So he's telling them, get, your, get yourself ready. Get your offering ready. Get your wheelbarrow. Put it in. And uh, we'll bring the wheelbarrow over. And, and this is what he's coming to do. And, and so he carries on in the discussion there. And uh, he, he comes and he's excited. He wants to see them. And uh, he wants to be in their church there and whatever. Well, you know, when the church is, as Paul talks about, when, when one part of the member rejoices, everybody rejoices. So we rejoice with the payats. They get a new baby. Bobby's family, uh, they lose Bobby. They lost Bob. And when we, we weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. And, but the church is, is the body of believers. And when we have people like uh, old guys retiring and new guys coming, we're, we're excited about those kind of things. When we see people go up in our churches and go on to serve, and uh, Ashley and I have been talking on the phone, and, and they're going to be part of a church plant in Dawson. Well, amen, and God bless. And that's what it's about, kids growing up in the Lord. And for the church to be excited to see those go on. And Paul was excited with these people here. But now their job is to portray, uh, help portray the gospel, and they're going to give. But in this chapter, he goes on down, and verse four, uh, 14 is the verse that I got to. And it says uh, this here. If we can, did I give you that in that order? Thing? Anyhow, he just uses the word. He says, so our people out here, he's talking about, he says, they long for you people. They yearn for you people. They long for you. They yearn for you. And that struck me. What kind of a person is that, that Paul says, these people yearn for you? To be a person that someone longs for, to be. Remember, we've always said, you're always a blessing. It's either sometimes coming, sometimes you're leaving. You decide whatever. But <clears throat> that's the situation. Let's ask God's help as we look into our thoughts this morning. Father, for your word, the lamp to our feet, the light to our path to get us through this dark and perishing old world. Uh, Father, Ukraine, they have, uh, they don't have the landmines, but they, they got to be careful where those uh, missiles fall near them and whatever. 
you direct our path through the world to avoid the pitfalls of life and the dangers from overhead, the dangers from on the ground. And we thank you for your word that it's that guide and then your spirit as well to help us as we come. And we, we ask the author to explain and to give us wisdom and understanding. So bless our time together here in your word this morning as we consider uh, having others uh, long to be, to be with us. So hear our prayer and blessing these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Having others uh, yearn for you. Um, the word is not uh, uh, lust as in uh, that's another word, but for people longing to be around you and whatever. The first thing we want to find here is in uh, chapter 9, of verse, uh, verse 7 of uh, uh, chapter 9 of second, uh, first Corinthians, second Corinthians. It says, each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And we know that verse here is on our offering basket, offering envelopes. Uh, each one of you must do just as he has purposed in his heart. And beloved, that's the first thing. Uh, it, it strikes me to have a uh, to, for somebody to want to be around you. You're better if you have a heart that's got a purpose. It's got a, a purpose uh, in fulfillment. The purpose idea is there is to choose for oneself. To choose for oneself. It's it's written in middle, so it's an act of reflective about yourself. This is who I am. I, it, when, you want to hang with me? I want for my sake, whatever that uh, you know my purpose. That I love God with my heart, my soul, my mind. Oh, dude, I trip up. Yes, you can tell me. You can say, Brother Will, you're slipping, you're tripping there. And then that's okay. And that's part of the job. But my, my choice is to desire to follow God. And we're to encourage that in the lives of each one of us. And so to, to rebuke or to challenge you and uplift and strengthen, lift up the hands that hang down, strengthen the feeble knees. You guys gave me a lamp a bunch of years ago for the, before it happened this week. Now, I didn't get to use it because I was so busy I couldn't even remember the lamp, let alone use it, uh, whatever, uh, and, and, and such. I started off Monday night in jail. And again, I don't see you. Okay, so uh, and they, they phoned me up. I went from 20 minutes sleep on Tuesday morning to a, to a Dawson Creek escape run. And, uh, and then uh, Wednesday, uh, what happened? Uh, I had to run a guy, a homeless guy, sleeping on the deck. No, you need to go home. Took him to Dawson. And then uh, Thursday morning, a friend of mine needs a ride at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to Fort St. John Airport to get on the plane to fly home to get married uh, in India. And then Friday, what do we do something with? And then Paul fought with beasts. And I'm in the back of the horse trail, and they're passing me bottles from Mickey's Place, and there's four mice in the sea can. This is not a happy day for me. Joe's running around like a banshee trying to kill these things, and he wounds one. And somebody finished that one off and, uh, uh, and whatever. I had an awful week. But I could hardly remember I needed the sunshine. And the purpose is to uh, have be, be known. We choose for ourselves to, to love God and to serve him. And so, and, and here, I, did I give you the verse there? Uh, it's Joshua 24, 15. Here's Joshua's words. If it's disagreeable in your ser sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. He's talking to the people of God. He says, you choose whom you're going to. If you're going to go back and serve the gods of the nations or whatever, you're dumb. Have at it. Do what you've got to do. Whether the gods which your fathers served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you're living. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's our challenge. And that's the idea of that purpose is to choose for oneself where you're going to be. So at the heart of purpose, that's that first idea. And so it's got elements in this heart of purpose. And here if we can go back to 2 Corinthians uh, 9, 7. And it says there, it says, each one must do as he's purposed in his heart, not grudgingly. Grudging is an interesting word there. Uh, it, it's, the Greek word is lupe. Oh, <laughs> my sixth sense of humor which Lucas has inherited, Lupe, and uh, grudgingly would be trying to find some way to get a loophole. I promise this money to the, to the work that Paul's going to support, the, the guys that were Jews, I promise this money. There's got to be a loophole I can get out of this. What's Psalm 15 say? You swear to your own hurt and you don't change. If you're, you're only part of being in heaven with God's people, whenever you swear to your own hurt and you don't change, that'll cost you sometimes. Why? Because our mouth runs ahead of our brain. If your mouth runs ahead of your brain, your oath is your oath. He says, you're better not to swear. Be careful of swearing. Be careful what you say. I promise to do this. I promise to give you that. If you say it, Psalm 15 says you do it. Not grudgingly. Just don't begrudge. Well, I, I signed up for this. My wife signed up. For she, she told me she could write this check, and I'd sleep on the couch if I didn't like it. So, okay, I'll give the check, but I don't want to sleep on the couch. And uh, uh, that's grudgingly, however. Uh, looking for loopholes. Compulsion. Necessity is another word he's got there. Uh, necessity is, is, uh, is, 
it's from a word, and it says it, it's kind of strange. It's got the word op, and it's got the word arm. It's, the, the, the curve of, it's got to do with a, a curve, and they, they say it seems like there would be something to do with the arm. So the necessity is somebody's got you in an arm lock. Give the money. You, your arm locked. God says, don't give. You purpose in your heart, not grudgingly. If you can't give, what he's going to say here, cheerfully, don't give. If you're, somebody's got your arm locked, don't give. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Hilarious is the word. It seems to come from a, it goes back a couple of steps in the Strong's Concordance. It says the word is from, a, or actually Robertson said it comes from a word having to do with favorableness. 1 Corinthians 29.3. And here's the idea. Look Way back in the Old Testament, this is David talking. Moreover, in my delight in the house of my God, the treasure I have of gold and silver, I give to the house of my God over and above all that I've already provided for the holy temple. That's David talking. He's providing for the temple. He's getting old, of course. He can't take it with him. I have a few friends in town that are rich. I say, what are you working so hard for? You can't take it with you. And my church don't need it. What are you going to do with all that money? And Hildy just doesn't have an answer for that from when I ask her. And so you can't take it with you. And these guys, David says, I just give to the house of God. And so look at verse 9. And here it is. Uh, he says, then the people rejoiced because they had offered so willingly, for they made their offerings to the Lord with a whole heart. And David also rejoiced greatly. God loves a cheerful giver. He don't need your money. Get your head around that. He does not need your money. He does not. Putin needs his friend's money. God doesn't need your money. His church doesn't need your money. He just wants to bless you if you give it. David was the man after God's own heart with all of his failures and fallings that he had. He was after God's own heart. And so this person that has a heart of purpose, it's choosing for oneself to, to act in a certain way. And that act is to give and be committed to the work of God. Not grudgingly, not of necessity, but favorably, hilariously. That's the word, hilarious. And God loves a hilarious giver. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. You've done so much for me. There's that. We're under a bit of a recession. Uh, there's place to take care. I was always told, if you take care of the nickels, the dollars will take care of themselves. And people throw in the garbage, and we, we get up here at Serreras, we get a couple of thousand dollars a trip for Mickey's place because they just throw cans and beer cans, pop cans, liquor bottles, and all those kind of things. We go get them on them. They don't want them. They, they don't want to be bothered dealing with it. They throw it on a pile, and we go get it, and mice and everything, fight them to get it. And whatever, but if we take care of the nickels, God will take care of the dollars. And throw all your nickels in the world away. I had a kid in high school one day. She saw a dime on top of the garbage and she picked it up. I said, You picked it out of the garbage? She threw it back. I said, Don't ever throw that dime away, honey. Because there'll be days you'll stand in line at a union crossing, whatever, for 10 cents an hour race. Uh, don't throw dimes away. You take care of the dimes and the nickels. The dollars to take care of themselves. And so we're, when you leave here, you're supposed to leave one light on, the one back above my desk there if you want, so people can wander through here and find their way in. Uh, let's shut the lights off, and those kind of things are important. Let's go on to the next point here, beloved. Though. Verse 9, um, 2 Corinthians says, As is written, he scattered abroad and he gave to the poor, and his righteousness endures forever. He scattered abroad and he gave to the poor. Beloved, we have a responsibility to, and you read your Bible, and you will see what God says to do with the poor. Get a concordance. Look at the poor. How many times the word poor comes up? And what does God want you to do with them? And it's never ignore them. It's never ignore them. It's not me talking to the homeless guy and saying, so I can give you a ride if you got 10 bucks. He might have had 10 bucks. He didn't offer me 10 bucks. I didn't expect 10 bucks. You pay me well enough to run him to Dawson when he's got to go. I get him out of town. He's not aggravating people at 7-Eleven or a ride to Vancouver and whatever. But uh, we have to care for those. And he scattered abroad. It's written, he scattered abroad and he gave to the poor. And that idea of us being mindful of the poor. We have a food bank connected with the SDA church on the outside of our building. I had to tell them this week, there's no food in there, folks. They buy food and put it in there and then whatever. So if you know somebody who's in need of food, I have tea. I can give them a thing, a basket of food. We give, we, we, if somebody's stuck, there's nothing there, we, we buy it. We've told you that. But look at it. He scattered it abroad and he gave to the poor. God's got a special place in his heart for poor. By choice, by whatever, doesn't matter. They're poor because they're poor because they're poor. Bad choices. And yet he says to the church, it is written, he scattered abroad and he gave to the poor. 
Let's carry on here. Our next point then after we have there, have a heart of purpose and then let it spring from abounding grace. Look at verse 8. We've missed that verse in 2 Corinthians because we're on purpose. But it says, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. So God is able to make all grace abound to you. What have you got that you've not received? And the answer is nothing. And we've said that verse two or three times now. I think we get a computer. Can we put that on the computer, Glenn? It flashes up when the last time I used that text it <laughs> says, uh, and whatever. It says, all grace is able to make you, uh, and God is able to make you all grace abound, make all grace abound to you. All grace. That God can help you with every situation you have. Why? Because he doesn't need your money. You're giving to the work of the Lord. You're giving ungrudgingly. You're giving caring for the poor. It does not save you. It shows that you're saved and you want to walk with God and you have a purpose in your heart to love God with your heart, soul, and mind. And you want to, these are things that show you're trying to buy credits to, for the, to not be sitting in the back row of heaven. Enter into the joy of your Lord. You were faithful in much. You're a little closer to the front. You, you were faithful in little. You're still in. You can see the glories of God in all those things. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance in every good deed. And you see there the good deed part? That's why he gives you grace. Not to save yourself, but to help others. To encourage and whatever. And so sometimes simply the issue of praying John, I'll accept any prayer that anybody will offer for Ukraine right now. She said she hadn't slept for a week and uh, praying, heartbroken. Her family's there. She's talking to her family again. You know, they can't get out and whatever. And she said the other night she slept for 12 hours, fell asleep on the couch, I guess, and was 12 hours later woke up. Just pray for people. All grace abound to you. And it's out of a well of grace in our heart and God's work in our hearts there. So every good work. Um, and whatever. First Tim Timothy 3.13. Did I give you that? I don't think so. Uh, and talks there, we've, we talked about it again. The deacon who practices these things uh, obtains to himself a good reward by being a deacon and uses that office. And deacon is just a servant uh, position there. Look at the back. Uh, righteousness is the next thing on that verse. We can have that there. Um, uh, the one back there. Thank you. He gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And God wants in our hearts to have righteousness in there. We give to the poor, but righteousness which endures, which is kept on and, and practiced and outworked all the time. And so of course, our struggling is to fulfill that, but that's our aim. That's our desire. That's the purpose in our heart. Remember, we're talking about having somebody long to for you. It's when they see a purpose in your heart, and your purpose is to strive for righteousness. In spite of your flaws and your trips ups and your failures, your righteousness is going to be there. But this guy, his righteousness endures forever. That's God's plan. He scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures. And the person who does these things, his righteousness endures. You purchase to yourself a good reward. From Timothy, we're told. Verse 9 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. It says, now he who supplies seed to the sower. That season's coming. Seed to the sower. Marge was telling me the birds are starting to nest up. And whatever, I noticed that as well yesterday. Why are you two hanging around, you little guys? Uh, looking for a nest. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. See that? Beloved, let these things leap off the page at you. The harvest of your righteousness. He don't care about your carrots. He wants them to grow so you have food and the stuff and something you might give to somebody, your neighbor over the fence or whatever. But the most important thing in the heart of God is, beloved, the harvest of your righteousness. That you're learning to be like Jesus. For sowing and increase. And increase the harvest of your righteousness is God's great interest. And the heart that wants to be longed for has a purpose that righteousness flows out and is the great interest of their heart. Verse 11 says, And you will be enriched in everything for all liberality. So God does this to you. Why? So that you can help out to others. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality. Liberality is giving to others. Whatever causes which through us is producing, and here, beloved, when you give in situations, the people that receive are thankful. If they're not, I could tell people, when I give to a situation, give to somebody getting married or something like this, I don't appreciate a card that comes back and says, thank you for the money. Okay? A phone call would be nicer, or whatever. If I give it to you, 
Levi, you're graduating. I'll try to send you some money. Okay, hold me down, okay? And then don't send me a card back. I wouldn't give it to you if I didn't think you were thankful. Whatever. But there's people like to send a card, whatever, like that. And, and you get these nice cards. And Karen and Angel make these really nice cards. And they're all those nice cards you get. I get a little, thank you. Now I set it down. What do I do? I gotta, we're a mill town, so I guess it doesn't matter if I recycle it or whatever. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality. Liberality is giving which to us is producing thanksgiving to God. And if I just had a little note that at least said thanks to God for you and your gift. I thank God for you. And that would be an Ashley thing. And uh, when I text with her, uh, whatever. You all know she's pregnant, eh? Anybody seen a baby bump yet? Hmm. I haven't seen any pictures or anything like this. I'll phone her up and say, okay, must be a baby bump in there. She's having it in July. Uh, so and just uh, uh, pray for Ashley. And we have a crib downstairs that's going her way and, and whatever. You will be enriched in everything for your liberality and then produces thanksgivings to God. Thanksgivings to God. That's what God's great interest is. And then verse 12, look at this one. He says, for the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing through many thanksgiving. This word ministry here is not deacon. This is liturgy, the word lit liturgy. And liturgy is a, is a Greek word for public works. This is the public works done in public. So this public work of services, this public work is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but also is overflowing through many thanksgiving to God. He goes back to that subject twice. You're doing this great work. It's a public work. And he says, but it brings thanksgiving to God from people. That's what he wants in the heart that purposes to follow him. He says, have the proof. And then the next thing is have the proof in the pudding. What does that mean? Has anybody ever Googled that? What does it mean to have the proof in the pudding? Huh? You can brag about your pudding all you want. If I don't taste it, I don't care what you say about it. First off, my taste buds might be different than yours. We had this happen this week. We don't eat at that restaurant. Everything tastes the same. So the line was, don't order the same food <laughs> and, uh, and whatever. And it says, the proof is in the pudding. If, if, if you say it's good, but nobody can have a taste, brag all you want. The proof is in the pudding when you get to taste it, it seems to me. And so here, the proof, is, look at verse 13. And it says, because of the proof given by this ministry, and here's uh, the word deacon, because of the proof given by this diaconate work, they will glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and of the liberality of your contribution to them all. They will be your deaconly work, your giving spiritually and carefully. They will glorify God for your obedience to the confession of your gospel. The proof's in the pudding. You say you love God with your heart, soul, and your mind, and then you can't give any money. Well, I'm hoarding this for my retirement plan and, and, and whatever. And uh, the saints at Jerusalem, the, the apostles and that, they can just go get a job at 7-Eleven to help support themselves. He says, this ministry, they glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the liberality out of that confession and your contribution. So the liberality out of your confession that's the proof in the pudding, okay? And then we have verse 14. And look what it says. It says, while they also, by prayer on your behalf, now they're praying for you, yearn for you, yearn for you, yearn for you. Why? Boy, it would be nice to have uh, Todd Chapman come. I, I love Todd. Uh, uh, Todd, we we've uh, known each other for years, get along well, and whatever. And we yearn to have these people come. He's been a blessing in the, in the fellowship and, and whatever that. And so we yearn for these people. But people yearn for you because you are of the surpassing grace of God in you. Isn't that wonderful that the grace of God would make somebody, others would long to be around them, want to hear them, want to see them, want to know what they think. While they also, by prayer on your behalf, they're praying for you, they're thankful to God for you, but they yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Be somebody that has the grace of God in them, out, outworking it, out letting it be outworked into the world. If you're just keeping it all to yourself and keep bringing all those nickels in and nickels in and nickels in, you're not doing much for God with it. While they also, by prayer on your behalf, yearn for you because it's surpassing great this grace of God in you. People long for them. They had purpose and heart. They were governed by this attitude of, I'm going to be this, I stand here. And I stand for these things, and I, re, I give to God's work and such like. And people, when they saw all those things, says, boy, let's have some of those folk, and let's hang with them. Verse 15 is a great benediction to the, the whole thing. 
Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. We talk about God's, he's interested in physical needs and all those kind of things, but the greatest one is what spiritual needs. This verse leaves you smack in the middle of both. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Food on the table. You know, there's been missionaries. Bruce Fife was a missionary. He says, Pastor, or Brother Bill, he says, my family and I, we got down on our knees and prayed for God to give us our next meal. Down on our knees and prayed for our next meal. Bruce is my age. This is not Elliot in the jungles. This is somebody in Canada, a missionary in Canada, on their knees praying, God, our next meal. Where is it? Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Bruce never ever died of starvation. Talked to him a few weeks back, months ago. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. His physical health care with all our needs. And then the spiritual needs. Wretched sinners can't find their way to heaven, can't find their way through the darkness of the world. And then Jesus hangs up on a cross, and Christ is finished. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Father, pour in your spirit. When they open your book, remind them to ask the author for help. When they want to live for you, ask the author for help. Have room in the, through the grace of God, through the word of God, to work and whatever, ask the author for help. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I trust the hearts will be encouraged. Strive to be somebody that others want to be around because of the grace of God that's flowing into you and through you to a world around them and see uh, what God will do with that in your life. Thank you. Our closing hymn for this section is Hallelujah, What a Savior. And Man of Sorrows, What a Name. So we'll stand together and sing. We'll, Glenn will dismiss us in prayer. And then we'll gather around our communion table as we uh, <laughs> uh, always do. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. Ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who to reclaim hallelujah what a savior bearing shame and scoffing rude in my place condemned he stood sealed by pardon with his blood hallelujah what a savior guilty vile and helpless we Spotless Lamb of God was He, full atonement can it be, hallelujah, what a Savior. Lifted up was He to die, it is finished was His cry, now in heaven exalted high, hallelujah, what a Savior. When he comes, our glorious King, all his ransom home to bring, then a new this song will sing, Hallelujah, what a Savior. Glenn, this was his invert, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that but you supply all of our needs. We don't have to worry about where our, our next meal is going to come from if we trust in you. And Lord, I pray um, that, uh, that you would just increase the harvest of our righteousness more than our, our physical wealth, Lord, because that's what you're interested in. Lord, we thank you also for your promise that our generosity will enrich us in everything and that we can be truly overflowing with thanksgiving to you. Lord, we thank you that you are a gracious God and your surpassing grace is, is found in that indescribable gift of your son that we, that we talked about this morning. And so we thank you for Jesus. Go with us this week, enrich us in, in those things and that we would be a blessing to you and to others around us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if our guys will come forward, we will... Uh